In this video I'm building a garden shed from Douglas fir. Let's rewind to where this project began. My first step in this project was clearing the spot where I want the shed to go. This meant moving all of my lumber to somewhere in the garden. When that was done, I started by cutting the 9 degree angle I'm going to need for the roof. This is the minimum my roofing requires. Let me show you in the 3D model what I mean. The top of the back post gets cut to a 9 degree angle. The top bars on the side structure are angled downwards so they meet the front. At the front I can leave everything square since I'm cutting bird's mouths into the rafters. I'll show you what those are later in the video. First let's get started on the top of those back posts. With the angle cut on the top of the back posts, I'm cutting the fronts to length. I'm doing this because these have a specific height I want them to be. The back will be cut to length once I can measure how tall it exactly needs to be. Now that the posts are cut to length, I'm marking out the half lap joints that will hold the upper beam and make the cutout from the posts. I'm using this construction mostly for aesthetics. I really like the look of those thick beams. Plus it's super sturdy once it's finished and I like that as well. Next I use the post to mark out the corresponding cutout that is required in the top beam and cut those. Since these are shallow cuts, I decided to use my circular saw for those, since I could reach the right depth in one pass. Once all the cuts are made, I clean it up with the rasp and dry fit the pieces. A useful tip for this cut is to use the piece you already cut to set the depth of your blade. This way the corresponding piece is exactly the depth you need. Another great idea was trying to glue my plastic spacers underneath the posts. This didn't hold at all, so I used screws instead. I know this isn't how you should keep your wood off the ground, but I think it will be fine. Measuring what the height for the back post should be and cutting those to length. Once I cut them, I fastened them to my garage wall using some angle brackets. Mainly so that I could measure the exact distance between the posts and cut the frame that will go in between to size. In hindsight I could have also skipped this step and fastened the frame in between the posts, then set it in place and fasten it to the wall. Anywho, moving on. I cut some 2x4s the length off camera and I'm now cutting the 9 degree angle for the top of the back support. With that angle piece cut, I'm making a simple frame with butt joints. With a nice tight fit, the frame goes in between the two back posts. I fasten it with plenty of long screws along the whole length. 
Next up are the frames that go in between the front and back posts. To start those, I first cut the lower stretch at the size. The vertical pieces all have different heights, so I only cut those to rough length. The top piece needs a 9 degree angle on both ends. I cut those on the table saw. The vertical pieces also need a 9 degree angle at the top, and after I cut those, I determined the exact length and cut them to size. With the frame assembled, I fitted it between the left side first, since this needed to fit exactly between two walls. The same procedure as the other frame was applied for the other end. I lifted up the frame to the correct height with spacers on the bottom and screwed it into place. With the sides in place, I could also attach the other front corner post. Before I attached that, I made sure I had the same overhang on the outside as the other one, so when I attach the outside boards, they are nice and flush with the posts. I use a simple cutoff to measure this. The last piece to complete the frame is the front beam. On my first attempt to lift it in place, it didn't go so well. After some fine tuning and lashing strap to pull the frame together, I made it work. Luckily the middle post that holds the door went in nicely. The last frame I have to make is the one that goes next to the opening for the door. I took some measurement at different heights before I cut everything to size and assembled it. I didn't attach it yet and you will see why later in the video. Next up was cutting the rafters. I first cut them to rough size so I could get the 9 degree angle on my table saw. Once I had those, I measured the exact length I needed and cut them all to size. Then I marked out the bird's mouth using the actual frame to mark it. It's this shape you see here. It ensures the rafters stay in place and it gives extra strength to the whole structure. Once I cleaned up the markings, I cut it out using my pull saw. First staying shy from the line and working my way to a nice fit. Checking with every step so I make sure I didn't remove too much. With one piece exactly right, I could mark out the rest and cut them. Before installing all the rafters, I fastened the ones on the outside. I then spaced out the rest and measured how long the pieces in between needed to be. I cut those to size and I could install the entire roof structure. Now that the frame of the shed is completed, I continued by rough cutting the planks for the side. I hand cut them to about 3 meters and used the table saw to roughly cut the rest in pieces of 1 meter. Once I had those pieces, I measured every piece separately and cut it about 1 centimeter shorter so I had a 5 millimeter gap on each side. The first few rows were very simple. I cut the planks to size, leaving about a 5mm gap on each side. 
Then I attach them to the frame by nailing stainless steel pins in the tongue. Since the top is angled, the last two pieces weren't very easy. I marked the position where the roof started and cut a piece of 9 degrees off the top with the jigsaw. Of course nothing in this situation was absolutely straight, so I used my sander to fine tune the fit. The other frame I'm going to cover can't be assembled in the same way because of the wall that's in the way. So that's why I didn't attach the frame yet. After the first board is in with two nails, I'm taking the frame out, attaching the planks on the floor and then placing it inside the frame. This was far from ideal, but I made it work in the end. Let's try that again. With the sides installed, I went on to finish the roof. I'm covering the frame with an 18 mm thick hardwood plywood. The width was perfect, the length needed to be a little shorter, so I finished that cut first. Next was the 9 degree angle I put on the side that goes against the wall to give it a nice fit. I used my flush trim router with the tilt base to do this. Placing the sheet on top of the roof wasn't too difficult since I'm tall enough to lift it on the frame. Once I had it on, I clamped it to the frame, climbed on top and fastened it using screws. For the screw locations I first drew some lines to make sure the screws ended up in the rafters underneath. The roofing material I'm using is called Duraline. It's made from a soft material called Bitume or something like that and can be screwed on using special screws. I really like the stuff, it's super easy to install and it looks great. If you're interested to learn more about it, I have a link in the description. Last but certainly not least is the door. I measured the height and width in a few places to make sure it was the same everywhere, which it was luckily. Then I cut both the back support and the front planks to size. Assembly was done by first nailing the boards from the front, then I flipped the door over and put screws in from the other side. With the easy part done, I marked out the hinges. These things are not my friends. I've never had an easy time assembling hinges and this project was no exception. Anyway, I marked them out, cut the mortises with my router. Before I started, I made sure to scorch the lines with the knife. This gives a cleaner end result in my experience. My plan was to first attach the hinges to the door, put the door in its position on a spacer, mark out the hinge locations, 
cut those out and then hang the door. A few things didn't quite go as planned. After I had made the mortises, I hung the door from the top hinge. Trying to get the other ones to fit the mortises seemed impossible. For my second attempt, I attached one part of the hinge to the post and one to the door, leaving only the pin over to put back in. This solution had some potential, but the problem was there was no room for the pin to slide in next to the post. In the third attempt, I made some room on the post with the chisel so the pin can slide in. Also, I used a hammer, which did the trick in the end. I don't recommend this solution, but the door is in and it works. Yes. The last part of the exterior of the shed is the lock. I don't know if this is something international, but here in the Netherlands it's called a farmer's lock. Anyway, the installation is very simple. It's just a plate that attaches to the front of the door, one through hole for the handle and the hook on the opposing post. Also, I attached a strip on the inside of the door so the door has a positive stop to lock against. Last thing to do now was sand all the rough spots to remove any big splinters and in the interior I just put a simple rack and some hooks for my garden tools. I hope you liked the build and the video. If you have any questions or comments leave them below, any feedback is welcome. Stay safe everyone and until next time at the Cornerfield Shop.